Hello there. Welcome to Ca uh, Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm your host, Gia Christopher. I'm the chairwoman to the Placer County Libertarian Party, and I'm also a seasteading ambassador. And with us tonight are my guests, Tanya Collins, a parental rights and children's health advocate. She's also in the lending and real estate industry. She's a professional in that industry. And our other guest tonight is Mr. James Just. He's the vice chair to the Sacramento County Libertarian Party. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for, Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Um, so let's just jump right in there. Um, Californians, um, we have a new bill um, fighting charter schools. Um, Gavin Newsom just signed into law a bill that would cap the amount of charter schools in the state. Uh, what do you think about this? Yeah, well, this law, I, I didn't get a chance to overlook over the law completely, but apparently it just doesn't just cap the, the schools. It also gives more oversight to local school boards, which, of course, are lots of them are controlled by the unions. You know, the union members have so much of impact. So it's really a, an attack on charter schools. They want to get rid of them so they get those kids back into the, the public, public school, school system, even though it's the same system. It, it's kind of goofy, but they just want to get these students back out of charter schools, back into the traditional public schools, because they like the control, I guess. You know, that's assuming people's motives is always dangerous, but what are you gonna do? So instead of improving public education, they're going to reduce the amount of choices a parent can make. What do you think about this? I'm, I'm disgusted by it, you know? Um, we fight so hard to be individuals and have choices and places that we want to send our children, you know, via, via private school, charter school, public school. Let us do our thing. Why are you always coming after after each, you know, entity? And I just don't get it. Leave it leave us alone. Leave us alone. Leave us alone. That's a that's a very popular theme with libertarians. <laughs> leave us alone. Uh, why do you think that Governor uh, Gavin Newsom is going after charter schools? Do you think it has anything to do with the fact that the teachers unions gave him over a million dollars uh, to do his uh, governor campaign. Uh, do you well, think that that has any? Well, it's not just the teachers' unions. It's all the uh, service employees, the administrators, and the then the you know the cafeteria workers, and all those other workers are also unionized. And so it's 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 the law, law enforcement industrial complex. We also it's the educational industrial complex. We've got this whole system feeding off the taxpayer dollars and so they just continue to make the system bigger rather than say okay well, let's stop making it bigger and actually make it work yeah absolutely we never actually hear that it's always we'll just throw more money at it we'll give more programs but never stop and make it work right right but they also get rid of a lot of programs um in public school you know they they get rid of a lot. You know, your your boy goes to a charter, right? He actually goes to a learning resource center, learning which operates resource. as a homeschool. Perfect. And because of that, we do not have to um, answer to the state. We don't take any state money. We don't answer to the state. And his education, he wakes up every morning on Sunday and wishes it were Monday so he could be in school. Right, right. It's and an incredible opportunity. Definitely, it's um, a choice, you know? It's a choice that you have, but you know, they're coming after homeschoolers. Absolutely. They're coming after charters. They're, you know, they're just lining them, all, lining them all up because they want everybody in public schools to to be taught what they're taught in public schools and like an indoctrination center. Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, do you think that it has anything to do with our next topic, which is? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, introduce you as a children's health advocate, parental rights advocate, and you've been doing a lot of really interesting work here lately at the Capitol, in particular to SB 276, SB 714. Could you give us a little bit of backstory on what you've been doing at the Capitol with those? Yeah, uh, so we, are, we were fighting to um, make for sure these bills did not pass. It was uh, very stressful. So what the what SB two seven six is, uh, it originally started. I believe it was in February, and it was a completely different bill. Uh, this author uh, wrote out. He scribbled out everything in this bill, and then introduced it as I'm taking away medical exemptions. Um, these medical exemptions are for children that are uh, medically fragile. 
um, children, vaccine injured children. And, um, you know, there's, there's history where, <clears throat> you know, there's medical history for your, your family and everything. And so there's doctors that suggest, hey, you shouldn't get, you shouldn't have your child vaccinated because you have an autoimmune disorder. And now they're like, sorry, nobody's getting a medical exception, basically. And it was hard to get one anyways. Um, it, was, it, it really took a lot. You have to go through a lot to get it. You have to get your, your child's um, DNA tested. It has to, um, they have to go through all the, the process to, you know, uh, these, are, these are doctors that are very professional um, and then they know what they're doing in regards to um, these genes. They're, you know, they're, they're testing these genes and everything. And uh, so anyways, <laughs> So what they're doing is they did a video where they had over 800 doc people just individually called 800 doctors. Hey, my child had an anaphylactic, um, you know, adverse reaction to her vaccine. And I would like to come in and get a medical exemption for her. Nope, we don't do that here. 800 doctors in the state of California just refused to do it. And so we, you know, my, my, the reason why I got in this movement is because my daughter was injured and, uh, we had to go to a doctor, a specialist, and he had said, you know, she cannot have any more vaccines. She, she, there is a possibility to where she could die. And we just don't, we did not trust it. We just didn't want, you know, anything to do with it. And we vaccinated, we you know, we followed the, the protocol, you know, I guess there's, you know, the certain protocol, we followed it. And um, so I'm rambling, but you know, I, uh, that's, um, so that's what we're up against. So with SB 276, it was taking away her medical exemption so she wouldn't be able to go to school. And I had to fight to make for sure that she was able to go to school because she's not, she's not, you know, she's not disease written. She's not, you know, she's not going out there spreading illnesses um, or anything like that. And so why, why would you come and attack the kids that actually really need it? And they right. say the reason why they did it is because all of these doctors are giving out fake medical exemptions. Well, one of the co-authors of the bill was very clear that there has not been any fraudulent medical exemptions. However, um, she said there hasn't been yet. Right. And so that doesn't make any sense. So you pass a bill on something that's not going on, but you know, it was, it, it, and then the lies, the, the lies from the author, they're all, I, I mean, they're all Democrats um, that really took our whole rights away. Um, and they, um, the lies, the lies of the author stood up there and he lied through his teeth. First off in, when it was SB 277, when they were taking away personal exemptions, um, all of that good stuff, they were, uh, he had said, I'm not going to go after medical exemptions. Well, now we're here. That was, uh, you know, uh, four years later. Now he's taken away our medical exemptions and our children are sick. And, and it's really sad. You know, we have um, sick children and nobody's addressing that. Nobody's addressing why there's one in 59 children that have autism. Nobody's addressing the autoimmune disorder uh, issues. Nobody's addressing cancers. Nobody's addressing um, seizures. Nobody's addressing learning disabilities. No, it's all like measles, measles. I'm sorry, but when I was younger, measles was a thing. Like everybody got measles and it was not a big deal. Um, and I don't understand why they make, you know, the media puts it out there. Oh my gosh, it's, you know, that, you know, you're going to die from measles. Right. And, okay. you know, that's not the case. The so it sounds like they're taking away your right to choose your child's 
health decisions, taking away the doctor's rights to exactly decide for the health of your child. Exactly. And then they're also no. taking away your child's educational opportunities by forcing you into a public school where you are mandated into having. Right. So th where do these children go? Where where are these children they would supposed have to, to go? Well, now they're home, they would have to be homeschooled. Have to be There's homeschooled. no other, I mean, they've. Okay. you cannot send them to a private, you can't send them to a charter, um, or, or I think some charters are available because they, they, right. they operate, they operate as, a, as, as a homeschool. Yes. It's, it's actually worse than that because it, it goes right down to body autonomy. They are, re right. they, are, they are taking our rights away to have the fundamental choice of it's my body, it's my choice to do with it what I want. The government has asserted the right that we are all essentially now subjects and we are to whatever the government wants to do. We, they can just dictate to us what we must inject into our bodies. We no longer have control of our bodies. Right. We, have no, right. we no longer have the right to self-ownership. Right. Yeah. Well, and now the author's thinking about going after adults. Yeah, well, it's, So it's just, you know, the line. He's, it's you know, they're always just lining, lining them up and... They never stop, but they don't know how. Okay. Right. So let me ask you a question. Uh, aren't vaccines good? Well, sh in a sense, sure. I'm fully vaccinated. All my kids are fully vaccinated, despite the fact that my youngest son was spent three days in the hospital due to a vac in vaccine injury. Uh, we believe it was actually because of multiple vaccines, not a single vaccine. We think that he had five on one day, and that was and that was too much because we, none of the other kids had any issues with vaccines. So our issues. Okay, you know, maybe a single vaccine is vastly different than the vaccine schedule, which they have six, seven, eight vaccines on a single day. So, you know, maybe we should just try different schedules. Let us choose rather than, than have some bureaucrat dictate to us, no, we think it's good that everybody has all these vaccines, and so we're going to blanket dictate to everybody what we're going to do. It's, it's fundamentally dangerous. Ultimately, the concept of libertarian philosophy comes down to self-ownership, but also the idea that good ideas do not require force. So if vaccines are good and safe, you don't have to force people to get right. them. They'll stand in line for days in exactly. order to get their children the life-saving um, procedures. It's, um, the, it's, the it's Gary a medical Johnson. procedure. Yeah, it's the Gary it's Johnson a medical thing. procedure. It's a medical procedure. <laughs> It's yeah. a medical procedure, and the worst thing that on a parent's conscience would be that they made the wrong choice. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that parents take lightly. Did you make that choice with your children? No, we, we that same child, we actually had, um, we put him through a vaccine trial for an ear infection because all our other kids had an issue with getting ear infections. So we said, well, let's go ahead and sit him through this ear infection trial, and it went fine. And he didn't have any problems with it. But what scared me actually was, I mean, I be, actually be kind of became this whole, not anti-vaccine, became skeptical of the vaccine um, Establishment? Movement. Yeah, it was when they stopped the trial early. They said the results were going so well that they stopped the trial early. And they were gonna go ahead and implement the vaccine. I said, well, if it's going well, why are you stopping it early? Why don't you just, you set up the processes for a reason. In science, you run through the processes you set up until it's at the end and they ended the thing early. It's going so well, we're gonna end it early. And that scared me. Tanya brought something to us today that I found really interesting. And I'm a parent whose children were vaccinated. I was vaccinated myself. Um, I, I'm definitely not who you would call an anti-vaxxer, but as I've become more educated in this, I, I'm, I'm recognizing that there are things that no one ever uh, tells you on the media. One of them is vaccine makers are exempt from liability. And this is a fact. Can you explain more yes. about this? A fact, yes. So in um, 1986, Congress had passed the um, national, I can hold the card up for you. Um, these are uh, complimentary of uh, my friend Josh and Olivia. They are, um, they uh, founded this, this movement, uh, this piece of the movement, uh, V is for Vaccine. And um, in 1986, uh, Congress passed the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act. This law established the National Vaccine Injury Compensation Program, which uh, provided a no-fault compensation for those injured by vaccines and exempted ma uh, vaccine manufacturers from li liability. Um, and also, to date, the uh, to date the U.S. Court of Claims has awarded almost four billion dollars to vaccine victims uh, for catastrophe catastrophe injuries. Um, and so, you know, it's 
it's something very, very, and and who pays it is the um, taxpayers for when you get a vaccine, you buy that vaccine, it's, there's the tax on that. A dollar goes into this fund for vaccine injuries. So that's an interesting thing because when you watch the news, they would have you believe that vaccines are 100% safe. So why is there a fund set up for people who have exactly. vaccine Good question. injuries? Mm -hmm. That's a question I don't think a lot of people are asking and I'm not saying you should vaccinate or not vaccinate. Right. I think it's a choice between you and your doctor, but I think it's something that people really need to know more about is that there is a fund for vaccine injured children. And well, you say you throw, you throw out doctor and there's a lot of doctors that don't read a manufacturer's package insert. Now on this manufacturer, uh, this package insert, it clearly lists all the adverse reactions. Not all of them, I'm sure that there's more to it because we are a sick generation. This, I mean, we are a sick nation. It's, uh, we have, you know, sicknesses everywhere. Um, and we have, you know, on the actual package inserts, we have seizures and doctors say it's normal. That's not normal. We have ear infections. Doctors say it's normal. It's not normal. We have, um, cancers. We have autoimmune disorders. Um, we, we are very, very sick and our children, it's one, right now it is one in 56% of our children that have a chronic illness. Now that's a problem. If we're talking, you know, measles, anything that we have a vaccine for, measles, mumps, rubella, these are, these are, these are mild illnesses compared to seizures and cancers and autoimmune disorders and all that kind of stuff. Like, so I don't, you know, to, to mandate this is, you know, and it's, they've already mandated, they've already mandated for schools. Um, you know, they took away, you know, you have to have a medical exemption. Now they've just like abolished the medical exemption. There's no, there's no way a doctor is going to be getting, getting it. And anybody, any doctor that does give them, what they do is they investigate them. They, you know, the medical board goes right after them and they're like, we're going to take your license away if you give any more, you know, medical exemptions out. Yeah. So they bully them. Yeah. They get bullied. Well, and part of the problem with the, the compensation program is it removes the traditional discovery process. We actually cannot go through these companies and say, well, give us your data because we have to go to the government and ask the government to go look at the data from the vaccines and they're all kind of in bed together. Mm -hmm. So the traditional discovery process that we've used to right all kinds of wrongs from companies and to discover all kinds of various issues with you know PCBs and all the various environmental issues we don't have that those same tools to fight with okay maybe there's something wrong with the manufacturing process maybe there's something wrong with multiple vaccines do we have any data do you guys have any data in your in the research we don't get to look right we and don't they don't that. they don't have any data for multiple vaccines given at one time they don't have any data to support that no. they and they also have not done a vaccinated versus unvaccinated study. They have not done it. The government will not do it because they know that unvaccinated, the unvaccinated children are healthier. So, you know, it's, you know, the government hides a lot of stuff um, and it's very shameful. Wouldn't proponents of mandatory vaccines say, uh, yes, you could have a child, maybe one in a thousand that's a statistic and could die as an adverse reaction, but aren't you, isn't that an acceptable consequence to protect the common good, to protect the general population? Well, not if you're the one. Mm. Um, or, and the, the common good is a strange thing. Protecting the common good has been used to create all kinds of horrors throughout all of history. The mm. common good is the most, the most used excuse for genocide. It's, you know, we're gonna protect our culture, we're gonna protect the common good, so we're gonna get rid of these people. We're gonna force this group of people out of our country, whether it's genocide, whether it's, you know, the trail of tears, it doesn't really matter what it is, we're gonna force this group of people out for the common good. And the common good isn't an excuse. It's not an argument. It's uh, expendable individuals and, and that's a shame. That's not the American that's a way. No, that's a shame. That's a complete shame. It's a shame. Uh, what do you think that the consequences are if um, these, when these mandatory vaccines, uh, when these laws go into effect, what do you think the consequences will be to uh, families and doctors? 
Well, you know, well, the doctors can't have any say so over, over, you know, their patient's health, the patient that they've had forever. But there's also doctors that refuse to give, you know, they will say, hey, this was due to a vaccine. But I can't give you a medical exemption because the medical board is going to come after me. Aren't they allowed to have two in their career and before they become? They won't. No, they will not. There, there are doctors that will not even touch it, won't even. Nope, they will not. They don't want to put their medical license on the line. And so they won't. They will not do it, hmm. um, which is shameful. Well, the, politi the politicization. Oh, man, I can't speak. The politicalization of the medical field has actually started a long time ago. It started with the, uh, you know, the Oxycontin wars and all that stuff when they decided that we're going to fight the prescription drug problem by, you know, more prohibition. Mm -hmm. And then we just got worse. And now we have the, the drug problem in the streets. And they're essentially doing the same thing now with, with vaccines. You know, it's, it's slightly different, but the end result is going to be the same. The unintended consequences, they don't even pay attention to. Mm -hmm. And so they don't really care. What happens is the, hey, we've virtue signaled essentially to our group, and we're gonna, and we're just, we're gonna move on to the next election, to the next thing, and you know when it doesn't work, ah, it doesn't matter. We'll just pass a new law, or we'll have a new program, we'll spend some more money, and we'll go on to the next election. It's the cycle we've seen it for. I've seen it my entire life. So right. in, until the society decides to stop it and decides to actually vote differently, we're gonna keep seeing the same thing. Would you say that this is an issue that bridges the gap between? homeless Republicans and homeless Democrats who don't have a home in their party because they are an outlier uh, when it comes to this particular topic? Would you say that there are a lot of people on both sides who um, don't have a political home anymore because of this issue? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, the political homeless is growing. It's whether it's what is the walk away campaign for the walk away Democrats and you've got a lot of the, the right wing Republicans now are leaving because they can't deal with Trump and, and all that stuff. That's So there's this big, huge gap that theoretically libertarians or Green Party have an opportunity to take to take advantage of. The question is, are we in position to do it? I think the uh, the common thing there is that uh, we don't take advantage of uh, groups for political purposes. It's the home of the party that says we want to take over just to let you be free. And if you're not making promises to people and promising them free things uh, besides their own freedom, uh, you don't really get a lot of uh, donor uh, and campaign contributions for promising people their own freedom. Right. Um, so what's next for mandatory vaccine laws? Um, I know that you've been working a lot with um, this big, um, ever-growing movement. How many people did you have um, at this last rally that you were at the Capitol? How many people were there? How many moms? Um, so we had over, I think, close to 800 in, uh, moms, dads. It was, uh, you know, a, a peaceful protest type thing. Um, we had signs. Uh, we walked around the Capitol. Um, I helped, you know, register everybody, get everybody, you know, uh, get their signs out and everything. And so it, we're just now at this point, since our, you know, legislators are not, they're just ignoring everything. They're ignoring their constituents, period. Because we've had, we've had people in our movement beg for a sit down, a talk. Can we just talk about this bill, please? They refuse to even yeah. meet with them. So, you know, we, we have to now educate the public. We have to say, look, this is really, it's, this, is, this is happening now. So please, just, we just want you to be informed. We want everybody to have informed consent so that you can know if you're doing, you know, you, wanna, you need to decide what you're gonna do for your, ch your child, your family. Are you advocating individual responsibility? You know, yes, hmm. yes. Interesting. Wouldn't you say that that's one of the pillars of our entire political philosophy, individual responsibility? Well, individual responsibility, but the, you know, I think one of the things we should do is we have to explain that that requires you know, the responsibility for your family, responsibility for your friends. It's not just about us. It's not me, me, me. It's, it's me and my friends and family and the network that comes around me. We're not, just, we're not selfish. 
you know, it sounds, a lot of times libertarians, we sound selfish. Hmm. We think that it's, it's me, but it's not about me. It's I want you to be free because I know you being free is the best thing to make the world a better place. And I want the world to be a better place, and so that's why I advocate hmm. freedom. You're not just advocating for yourself, you're advocating for your family and your community. My family, my community, their family, their extended family, I want everybody to be a better place. And freedom, it does that. Now, you can make an argument that you know too much freedom is, can be a bad thing as well. There's arguments, there's arguments to that, but we're not we're, we're nowhere near that. So I'm not even worried about that. Let's start moving away from this centralized control that we're just we're rushing to at a mind-boggling speed, and we'll argue about the details of exactly where we stop with freedom. We'll worry about that later when it actually matters. It's <laughs> Would you say that um, the Freedom ends where infringing upon another person's rights begin. Yeah, your right to throw a punch ends at somebody else's nose kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, you're not allowed to pollute somebody else's yard. You're not allowed to break in, break somebody else's window with, you know, you know accidents happen. You pay for it, right? Or, Absolutely. Or you work out some kind of arrangement. Absolutely. And uh, so if people wanted to get involved... Let's say uh, you know a lot of people who are uh, advocates, advocates on this topic and issue. Um, these are working parents. These are homeschooling parents. These are doctors and nurses. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people that are going to be affected uh, by these um, by the dangerous, dangerous. Yeah. No, not dangerous to everyone, but dangerous to certain fragile yes. populations. Yes. Uh, where can where, how can the Libertarian Party help facilitate your advocacy work and your growing party of ad, ad, activists? How can the Libertarian um, Party and this growing movement of freedom fighters, how can we bridge the gap and come together and how can we help? Well, first we have to look at it as it's not a vaccine issue. Right. This is not a vaccine issue. Um, what it is, it's, uh, it's a freedom issue. It's freedom to put what you want to put in your own body, like, uh, or not put what you want, what you don't want to put in your own body. It's a freedom issue. So, you know, I'm for rights, you know, uh, you know, if you're, I, I, I think that like, if, um, we, we come together as um, a coalition, a coalition, whatever you want to do, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, we just need to come together and realize that our rights are being taken away, and we we don't want any part of that. We want to, you know, we want to raise our own children. Let us raise our own children the way we want to raise our own children. So. Um, so. Yeah. And those of us who love liberty need to do the one thing we seem to not want to do is to gather together. And, you know, we like to work together, but we don't like to in impose ourselves on the political process. But we have to understand that if we don't, we're, that political process is going to be imposed on us. Absolutely. So, so we're, we're not we're not really imposing.